This is the World Health Organization guide to alcohol hand rubs for sanitization. Today, we're going to make some. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the workshop. Welcome to how to make hand sanitizer. Recently we did a video on home soap making, partly because COVID-19 outbreak has hit us all and it was getting very difficult for people to find soap. Now we've made our own soap for decades and provided you're careful and sensible and follow the guidelines, it's a safe, easy process to make good quality soap at home. So that video proved very popular. And we put the question out there that said, okay, is there anything else that people would particularly like us to see made? And I think semi-jokingly, the answer came back, go on then, show us how to make hand sanitizer. Well, ever one for a challenge, I took a look on the internet and I found out that the World Health Organization publishes a PDF leaflet on how to do exactly that. And in that leaflet, they give two formulae based on slightly different groups of chemicals. And as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, I think I've got everything I need to make one of those formulae. So I had a look, and we did. So here we are. Today, we're gonna make some hand sanitizer. Now, I appreciate that not everybody has these chemicals around, and I will explain why we've got them and what they're for, but, I did take a look on the internet and I found that whilst you can't buy hand sanitizer, you can still buy all the chemicals you need to make it. Now, I think the price has gone up quite a bit on some of them. I didn't exhaustively look through and I'm sure there are reputable organizations still selling them at the price they always did. But some of them certainly seemed on the high side. So I would say be very careful if you go out to do this and do so at your own risk. But for general interest and so that we know that yes you know what as a community we can make a lot of the things we need let's take a look at how to make hand sanitizer so firstly please if you're going to try and do this yourself get hold of the world health organization guidelines i'll put a link in the description below so that you can find them they're downloadable as a pdf you can print them out do be careful we're going to use some chemicals in this that could be injurious to skin. So I'm going to use eye protection and rubber gloves. Now the finished product is of course absolutely fine to use on your skin. But we're going to use some concentrated chemicals which get diluted during the manufacturing process and I wouldn't want to splash some of those on my skin. So great care, be sensible follow the guidelines. Let's talk equipment. Basically what we're going to do to make this hand sanitizer is mix liquids and we need to mix them in precise ratios. So to do that effectively what we're going to do is use measuring spoons for small amounts. We're going to use a measuring cylinder. Now that's something you might not have lying around but you'll have seen me use one in soap making. And if you're going to do this kind of workshop chemistry, I strongly recommend get some measuring cylinders in a variety of sizes. This is a 100 mil size. I would suggest getting a 20 mil and a 100 mil, and that will cover most of the things we want to do in sort of domestic quantities. For larger quantities, I'm going to use measuring jugs. I also have a scale to hand if I need it. And ultimately, we need a vessel to put in what we make. I'm going to make one litre. The World Health Organization gives a formula for 10 litres in manufacture. So obviously we're going to use just 10% of the amount that they list in the formula that we're going to use. Please do your maths carefully if you adjust from their 10 litre formula. I've double and triple checked my work. In the box at the top are the two formulations that the WHO recommend. Formulation one on the left relies upon having 96% pure ethanol. I don't have that. The reason I don't have it 
is because many places, including the UK, will put restrictions on the availability of almost pure ethanol because ethanol is the alcohol found in spirits. And if sold wildly, I think there is a fear that people would use it to make some kind of drinks and probably drink it in wrong concentrations, etc. Formulation 2 relies upon isopropyl alcohol at 99.8% pure. Well, we have isopropyl alcohol. Why do I have it? Isopropyl alcohol is a brilliant thing. It is a superb cleaner. It is a superb degreasing agent. Many people either make their own car screen wash from it or add it to existing screen wash to make it less likely to freeze. Now, some people will have a view on what that might do to your paintwork, etc. So I'm not advising you to do it. I'm simply telling you that's what many people do. You can also make a great glass cleaner for your house windows out of isopropyl alcohol because it evaporates quickly, leaves a smear-free finish. It's a very effective solvent at dissolving off stains. Very good stuff. So we've got isopropyl alcohol. The next thing it calls for is hydrogen peroxide. Well, we have hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a bleaching and disinfecting agent. Um, hair bleach, certainly for a long time, was made from hydrogen peroxide. It can be used as a whitening agent in all manner of manufacturing processes, so we have some of that. Ours is more concentrated than the formula calls for. The formula is asking for 3%. If you look at ours, it's 12%, so we will need to reduce that to a 3% concentration, but that's okay, we can do that. The next thing the formula calls for is glycerol. Well, we use lots of that. There we go, vegetable grade glycerin. Uh, I use that in making household products, in making cosmetics, in making soap, in making all sorts of things. Uh, it's a brilliant product. Now, the WHO describes that as a humectant. There's the word for the day, humectant. It's like a moisturising ingredient in the finished product. It also serves to slightly thicken it and make it slightly less runny. So, very useful product, a good one to have in your chemical cabinet. The final thing that you will need to make this, whether or not you need to dilute any chemicals, is clean, pure, disinfected water. The WHO guidelines give two options, either distilled water, which not many of us have lying around, or water that's been boiled and allowed to cool. So that's what I'm using, regular tap water that's been boiled and allowed to cool. So in summation, isopropyl alcohol, will be your biocidal agent. That's what kills the nasties. Some hydrogen peroxide in the mixture, cleans and disinfects the bottle that you put it in, make sure that anything that's lying around before the product is made up is killed off. And vegetable glycerin as a humectant, so as a moisturizing agent, as also a slight thickening agent, and clean water has either been distilled, been boiled, to make sure it itself does not contain any bad stuff. Before we start mixing chemicals, we need a vessel to mix them in. If I was making a lot, I would use a separate vessel and decant the finished, mixed hand sanitizer into small bottles like these. We're only making a litre, so I'm going to mix it in this large pump bottle, and I'm going to leave it in there. But in order to do that, I need to know exactly where the one litre line is. So how to do that? Well, I'm going to take the pump out. I'm going to put a funnel in. And I'm going to zero the scales. And then what I'm going to do is pour water into that funnel until the scales read 1,000 grams, because one litre of water 
weighs exactly 1,000 grams. And I use this technique a lot of weighing liquids rather than measuring them when I want to be precise. It's very hard in a domestic environment to exactly measure one litre. Yeah, we can get close with a measuring jug, but by weighing, we can get certainly within a gram and probably closer still if we've got very accurate scales, which is, you know, accuracy to 0.1%. So that's reading 998, and that's reading 1004. So I can play with that just a little bit. And after pouring little bits out and adding little bits in, I am now confident that we are reading exactly 1000 grams of water, which equates to exactly one litre of liquid in my bottle. So to know that I've made it up to a thousand millilitres or exactly one litre, all I have to do is mark the precise level of liquid in the bottle. So if I dilute so that black line that I've just marked on the bottle, so the liquid touches the bottom of the black line, that will be exactly one litre. Before we move on, I need to make our 12% hydrogen peroxide solution into a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. That's not complicated. What it means is in this bottle, I'm going to put one quarter of the 12% solution and three quarters of cooled boiled water. I'm now going to measure out using the measuring cylinder the exact amount of these chemicals that I require. Please note you cannot weigh things as one gram equals one centimeter cubed other than water because all these other chemicals have different densities it absolutely will not work for anything other than water. So into my mixing vessel goes 751.5 millilitres of isopropyl alcohol. Now we add 41.7 millilitres of 3% hydrogen peroxide. The next step is to add 14.5 millilitres of vegetable glycerol. You can see how thick this stuff is. And part of your problem is going to be getting that out of the measuring cylinder. But what we're going to do next is to top up our bottle to the one litre mark. The best way to do that, and this isn't my idea, this is from the WHO guidelines, is to use your cold boiled water to wash out the measuring cylinder to make sure all the glycerol gets into the final mix. So uh, watching the line and bearing in mind we don't want to cover the line, we just want to come up for our mixed liquid to touch the bottom of that line. And we're going to need a little bit more. And this is the fourth step, is to dilute what we've made to exactly one litre using cold boiled water. It just touches the bottom of that black line. Now the WHO suggests either shaking or mixing with a paddle. Or well, with this bottle, 
a long metal skewer goes all the way to the bottom. I've labelled the bottle. It hasn't got any colour in it. It hasn't got any perfume in it. We need to be careful that people know what it is. It doesn't fall into the wrong hands or children's hands, etc. It is, you know, a biocidal agent. So let's treat it with some caution. I put it in a pump dispenser. Comes out nicely. Works the same as any other form of hand sanitizer. Because it hasn't got any perfumes or anything in it, it has that slight screen wash kind of smell to it. And please don't think screen wash is a substitute for hand sanitizer. That isn't what I'm saying. But it has that kind of smell, similar ingredient in it. Evaporates off the hands. Gonna reiterate what we said in the soap video. Hot water, a traditional bar of soap is as good as anything. But this does have the advantage of, I can decant some out in a small bottle. Our doctors, for example, has recently brought in uh, a very good, what they're describing as a prescription ATM. So if you need to get your prescription, you don't have to go in the pharmacy. With a pin number, you can collect your medicines directly from a sort of hole in the wall machine. Very clever, but obviously wise when you're in a place like that to sanitize your hands before and after, and it may not be convenient to have soap and water. That was how you make hand sanitizer. I'm going to reiterate again, please. I'm not gonna publish the formula that I use. If you wanna do this, go to the source material, download the World Health Organization guidelines on hand sanitizer and follow it from the original source. It isn't complicated, I promise you. It's actually a really well-written guide. Very simple to understand, very simple to follow. I know it seems odd that I managed to do this. And I know most people don't have isopropyl alcohol or hydrogen peroxide to hand. But if you've watched a few of our videos, you will see that the same ingredients come up again and again and again in different formulas. You'll see beeswax and everything from soap to shoe polish. The isopropyl alcohol makes a brilliant glass cleaner for around the home. You know, for cleaning your mirrors and your windows. And it's absolutely top notch. You're going to see glycerol again and again in products that we make, quite possibly next week. If you enjoy this kind of content, can you spare us five seconds for a thumbs up down below? And if you'd like to leave us a comment and tell us what products you'd like us to make next and to show you, that really helps the channel out no end. We know then that we're hitting the mark and showing people what they want to see. And if you want to see those new videos as so they come up, hit the subscribe and the bell next to it, and you'll hear every time we upload new content. But whatever you do, stay safe, come back and see us soon, and take care.